Hi, my name is David Wright. I'm an associate trainer for Canine Coach, founder of I Work Dogs, and resident trainer for Zingy. In this video, we're going to go over some of the types of equipment that people use and will give you to walk their dogs. The flat collar. A flat collar is the most common collar you will find on dogs. They're usually leather or nylon. This is also where you'll usually find the dog's identification tags and medical information. Most flat collars close with either a belt type buckle or a quick snap. If you're going to walk the dog on a flat collar, then make sure the collar is sized properly. You should only be able to fit two fingers under the flat collar. Most people tend to keep them looser, but if you're going to walk a dog on a loose flat collar, they can easily back their heads out of the collar. Ask the owner if it's okay to switch to a martingale for the dog's safety. Martingales were originally designed for sight hounds because their necks are larger than their heads and they can easily slip out of flat collars. The collar is designed with two loops. The larger loop goes over the dog's head. The D-ring on the second loop is connected to the leash and when the dog pulls forward, the collar cinches around the dog's neck. The collar should be comfortably loose when the dog's not pulling. Slip and choke collars can be dangerous for dogs if used improperly. So if a dog pulls very hard against the slip and you can't get them to walk on a loose leash, you might want to switch to a different tool. Slip collars or choke chains have rings on both ends. The collar is formed by sliding the line or chain inside one of those rings. The loop then slips over the dog's head and rests around the dog's neck. When the leash is attached to the dead ring, the ring that doesn't slide, the collar does not constrict the dog's neck. When the leash is attached to the live ring, the chain slips tighter when there's tension and slips looser when the tension is released. The gentle leader head collar fits securely over your dog's nose. The nose loop redirects the dog's head towards you when he pulls forward, subsequently preventing him from pulling. Fit the neck strap high on the dog's neck, touching the base of the dog's skull at the back and snug above the Adam's apple at the front. You should only be able to squeeze one finger under the strap. Next, take the neck strap off the dog and holding both straps in your hand, slide the nose loop over the dog's nose. Buckle the neck strap high on the dog's neck in its pre-fitted position. Slide the adjustable sliding clamp up the nose loop under the jaw. The nose loop should be in front of your dog's eyes and behind the corner of your dog's mouth and be loose enough to pull forward to the fleshy part of the dog's nose, but not so loose that you can pull it off to the end of the nose. Make the final adjustment to the nose loop and then close the adjustable sliding clamp. The Easy Walk harness generally discourages the dog from pulling on the leash by redirecting them if they go too far forward. Place the shoulder strap over the dog's head with the chest strap resting on the dog's chest. Adjust the shoulder strap so that the connector ring sits above and behind the dog's shoulders. Tighten the shoulder strap to a comfortably snug fit, allowing for just a finger's width underneath. Two finger's width for larger dogs. The snug fit is required because the girth creates the foundation that keeps the harness in place. Make sure the chest strap is perpendicular to the belly strap and that the chest strap meets the belly back strap in the middle of the dog's body. Prong collars are self-correcting tools. They work just like martingales with two loops. They are made of a series of interlocking links, each with two blunt prongs turned toward the dog's neck that cinch when the collar is tightened. Prong collars are generally safer than choke collars, reason being they close evenly around the dog's neck as opposed to all the pressure being in front of the dog's throat. The problem with prong collars is that most owners don't know how to properly size them for the dogs. People tend to slide the collars over the dog's head. You actually have to open the links and fit them for the dog's neck. The collar should fit tight at the top of the dog's neck, right behind the ears. You should be able to fit a finger under two prongs. If the collar easily spins, it's too loose. In addition, you should always use a prong collar with a choke or slip collar. The slip collar doesn't give any correction. It's just to back up in the event the prong collar pops loose. The retractable leash allows the dog to go out 20, maybe 30 feet before it's fully unwound. People like to use these leashes because they give their dogs a sense of freedom. There are certainly instances where they are useful, but not great for normal dog walking. 
By their nature, retractables train dogs to pull while on leash because they learn that pulling extends the lead. If the owner has a retractable, ask them if you can use your six foot lead from your Zingy pack for the dog's safety. Dogs can dart out into the street towards other dogs or get tangled, resulting in burns or lacerations from flexi leads. If they insist on you using the retractable, lock it out five to six feet and use it as a normal leash.